Cortland Simmons with you here at the CS Racing Report. And of course, this is, of course, the Triple Prep Podcast, three major Kentucky Derby preps. But before we quickly get into the post position and morning line odds, let's take a look at the previous week's race, the $20 million Saudi Cup that was won by maximum security, darting from the outside to the inside when being slightly impeded by Mucho Gusto, won it in 150.59. McKenzie, disappointment, ran 11, just didn't pick up a, a, his foot a lick in this race. Midnight Bisu ran a beautiful race ground saving trip made a big run on the inside to finish second so it's going to be very very interesting to see where these horses go from this tacitus i think was the most interesting horse in here because after getting smoked in the jockey club gold cup he ran a very very nice race to finish fifth and in a race with 20 million dollars um being distributed uh he got a nice little trump for finishing fifth there and i think they'll you we're going to see an improved tacitus or at least that's the theory going a mile and a quarter uh not an easy thing to do uh, after a long layoff to not have a prep going into a race with so many good horses so i thought that that was the interesting thing about that moving on back to the three-year Olds. Fountain of Youth Stakes, mile and a 16th, uh, points race for the Kentucky Derby, won by Ette Indian, giving Patrick Biancone another live derby contender, came out of the 11 hole quickly within strides, within two or three strides, was able to get all the way over out of the 11 and get into the one or two path, get a ground saving, front running position, ran the socks off of this field, won pretty easy, very impressively, about as impressively as Tis the Law was in the Fountain of Youth. Dennis's moment. For all the excuses made about his Breeders' Cup falling to his nose, which which did uh, compromise his chances falling to his nose, he got, he got a decent break in this race. And just my description, he dropped out at three furlongs, gave up on the fight, and came up completely empty. And no matter what anybody says about him needing the race after time off and not being 100%, Running 11th after a long layoff is not what you want, is not the way you want to prepare uh, for the Kentucky Derby. And now he's under a lot of pressure uh, to get it all together and gain all the points that you need for the Derby off of one race uh, in his final prep, if he, whichever one Dale Romans decides to choose. So that's a little bit of a problem uh, right there. Uh, it's all or nothing with Dennis's moment. And he definitely, definitely flopped in a major way in this race. But Ette Indian punches his ticket as being a Derby contender. It'll be interesting to see where he goes next whether that be the Florida Derby or one of the other uh, nine furlong uh, route preps leading to the Kentucky Derby. Now, let's quickly get into the post positions for the three uh, major graded races uh, that are all carrying a 50, 20, 10, 5 format, 50 for first, 20 for second, 10 for third, and 5 for fourth. The historic Gotham Stakes won by such greats as Secretariat and Easy Goer and Native Dancer uh, and Jai Purr and, uh, and uh, also Dr. Fager, to name a few, along with Red Bullet in the recent years, uh, in addition to one of my favorites, General Assembly, a son of Secretariat. Uh, he, uh, like Jai Purr, was trained by the late, great Leroy Jolly. Uh, so it's a race that has cachet, has value. And let's take a look at the 11 horses in here. Linda Rice has two in here. We'll touch on that. Celtic Strikers, 30 to 1. Personal allowance at Parks was beaten 15 and a quarter lengths, though, in the Jerome Stakes to uh, begin the calendar year at Aqueduct at the Flat Mile. Uh, Celtic Striker 30 to 1. Informative for Giant Killer Uriah St. Louis. Uh, first in the maiden special weight at Aqueduct, fourth in the Remsen. He was beaten 10 and a half lengths. So it'll be interesting to see if he can make up that ground. 15 to 1 out of hold number two. War Stopper is 5 to 1. First in a one mile race, earning a 93 buyer speed figure. Uh, he's 5 to 1 coming out of post position number three. Very interesting. War Stopper. Number four for Dale Romans, trying to make up for. Dennis's disaster at the Fountain of Youth is attachment rate. He's 12 to 1. He won a one mile conditions race at Gulfstream Park by seven lengths. So he comes in with some momentum and a price at 12 to 1. It'll see, be interesting to see where that goes. Number five out of Stanley Huff's barn is Necker Island. He also has won at a mile, but he was fifth in the swale stakes. Is that an effort that he can turn around at the flat mile and, tr and, and, and basically run well here? Uh, number six is Mischievous. He is five to two. He was the winner of that mischievous Alex. He was the winner of that swell stakes where he ran everybody's socks off by seven links. Uh, he had previously won by 10 at parks. He is trained by John Service of Smarty Jones fame and the brother, of course, of the now famous uh, Jason Service, trainer of Maximum Security. Mischievous Alex, the swale winner, five to two, coming out of post position number six. The number seven at 12 to one is six to. He has won at six furlongs over uh, the Aqueduct Oval. Uh, 
earlier in the year in January. He'll be 12 to 1. We'll see what his odds are in the end. Sixto out of post seven. Number eight, one of the more interesting horses in here, the, from last to first winner of the Jimmy Winkfield Stakes. He's seven to two. He's trained by Linda Rice, one of her one of her two entries in here, Montauk Traffic. He will be coming out of hole number eight. We'll touch on him uh, as we take a look at the picks later on. Flatjack is number 15. He's 15 to one coming out of post position number nine. First in the Arlington, Washington Futurity, but he's become a mystery horse because of the inactivity since winning that race on the synthetic uh, up at Arlington Park. He will be 15 to 1, number 9, Flatjack, coming out of post position number 9. Number 10 is another horse of interest. Mark Cassie is the trainer. 6 to 1, untitled. He was fourth in the Swale Stakes, but his recent start, most recent start, he was second in allowance at Tampa Bay to the highly regarded Governor Morris out of Todd Pletcher's barn. He will be 6 to 1, coming out of number 10, untitled for trainer Mark Cassie. And rounding out the field is the second of the Linda Rice horses, first deputy. He has won twice at Aqueduct. But can he jump up in class uh, since he's been pretty much running against restricted state bread? So uh, that'll be a, a question that will certainly be answered on Gotham Day. Uh, and so with that being said, let's transition into the picks. I didn't really make a lot of them, even though there are a lot of horses in here. The way I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the number six, mischievous Alex being able to run these horses socks off or be able to withstand pressure on the front end, the number eight. Uh, Montauk Traffic finishing second, the number four, and the number 10. Six, eight, four, 10. That's one case scenario that's probably going to be for you guys a lot, uh, your final pick. A lot of people probably have faith that this horse will win there. I'm looking at Montauk, Tra Montauk Traffic to be the winner here, the number eight, the number six, the number four, the number 10, or you can flip-flop those, flip -flop those numbers. Uh, but those are the horses I think that you should use. Um, and I like Montauk traffic in here, although I do think he's going to have to be a little more forwardly placed, even with a slightly added distance in here. Again, you got to get into a rhythm and a pattern of not being multiple links and especially double digit links off the pace, no matter what the distance is. And particularly in route races, you would think the extra real estate helps, but there's too many uh, for the Kentucky Derby. Ideally, a dead closer is really difficult to win. Uh, even at 10 furlongs or nine furlongs or, or so forth, uh, you need to be tactically moving forward and uh, making up less than more lengths in order to win these races. But again, I like Montauk uh, traffic in this Gotham. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Derby, which has a lot of betting options. Let's start out. It's $400,000, same, a uh, little bit more distance, a mile and the 16th. 50, 20, 10, 5 point format. Number one, son of Curlin, two-time horse of the year out of a Colonel John Mayer. His name is Texas Swing. He's 12 to 1. He's got a U.S. time, a time form U.S. A speed figure of 102. Won his last race at a mile and 40 yards. He is 12 to 1 for uh, Todd Pletcher. Uh, he's not only by, not only is he, uh, sired by Curlin, but he's out of a Colonel John Mayer. Colonel John was the winner of the 2008 Travers and Santa Anita Derby. Very, very nicely bred. Son of Curlin, Texas swing 12 to 1 out of hole 1. Number 2 is another horse of tremendous interest. He's won at the 9 furlong route. He's cutting back a little bit for trainer Kieran McLaughlin, who's going to soon retire and become a jockey agent. He is the trainer of record of this son of street since the 2007 Derby winner. His name is Spa City. He is, of course, uh, he's got a 105 Equibase figure. He won uh, at a mile and an eighth. Uh, in 149.24. Why is that interesting? Because that's a faster time than either one of the first two divisions of the two divisions of the Risen Star, uh, worn by M Mr. Monomoy and Modernist. So he's very, very interesting in here. Got a lot of speed. How will he handle the pace pressure? Can he rate? Number two, Spa City. Number three is Relentless Dancer. He's 12 to 1. He was fourth in the Holy Bull. Uh, he's sort of, you know, behind Tis the Law. He does have two wins at the home of the Kentucky Derby, Churchill Downs, including a dead heat with Silver State, who was in the top three. Uh, he was among the top three finishers in Division One of the Risen Star. So he has that back class working for him at 12 to 1, though he's fourth in the Holy Bull. Can he really make up the ground uh, on this demanding Tampa surface, which may end up burying a few horses uh, or quite a few um entrance in this race. Relentless Dancer out of number three. Number four, Safi Joseph is the trainer of a son of currency swap. His name is Chancet. He was the winner 
of the Mucho Macho Man uh, at uh, the Flat Mile. Why is that interesting? Because he beat the likely favorite, Soleil Volante, convincingly in that race. He also has won at the Tampa Bay Derby distance of a mile and a 16th in the Florida Sire in reality stakes. So even though his pedigree might not suggest it, he has really uh, got some back class as far as running route races. He is 5-2 to two coming out of hole number four chance at number five is market analysis uh, he's eight to one he is a son of honor code uh, who of course was a son of AP Indy uh, and he's got a 94 equibase which is a lure on the lower side but a nice 103 time form US speed figure he was first in the Gulfstream Park allowance at seven furlongs can he make a slight quantum leap in distance to the eight and a half furlongs for trainer Todd Pletcher coming out of number five market analysis number seven uh, number six, before we get to number seven, number six is Momosa, son of Uncle Mo, 30 to one, low on the Equibase speed figure, 77. He has wanted a mile on the synthetic, but his low speed figs would indicate he's up, that he's a little bit out class here. We shall see. Momosa out of no hole, number six. Number seven is the prob probable favorite, so Volante, Sole Volante, two to one, impressive winner in running down Independence Hall in the Sam F. Davis. Equibay speed figure of 109 that puts him right at the top or very much at the top of the heap in terms of speed figs. He, of course, is a closer. We'll see how his tactics will play out if he can be a little bit more forwardly placed. Two to one, hole number seven, Sole Volante, the Sam F. Davis winner for trainer Patrick B. and Cone, who also trains Ete Indian, the Fountain of Youth winner. Let me know, trained by Ian Wilkes, is coming out of hole number eight. He, too, is a closer. Uh, Ian Wilkes, of course, was the assistant trainer to call Nasker of Street Sense, the 2007 Derby winner. He's 12 to 1. He was third in allowance at Gulfstream Park. Again, a lot of people think he's a little bit on the outside looking in. Coming out of hold number eight, let me know for Ian Wilkes. Number nine is another Pletcher trainee. He is unrighteous. He's a son of violence. He is really he's really interesting with 20 to 1 odds on him on the morning line. He's got a U.S. Uh, time form speed figure of 104. That's right up there with the top contenders. He was second to Spa City in that one and one that mile and eighth race at Gulfstream Park. So if you like the form in that race and those numbers, you're going to definitely be looking at unrighteous. He is 20 to 1, and that's a really fat price. Although I do think that those numbers will come down when people look at everything that we've touched on uh coming out of number nine on righteous for todd pletcher number 10 is bye bye melvin the negative on him uh he's dropped 12 points in his speed figures in his equa base and his buyers he was third at keeneland on october the 19th he has wanted a mile and an eighth on the synth on the turf and uh, he's trained by graham motion so he's in good hands can he run against these horses and you never know tampa has a deep composition that does mirror synthetic which horses that have had experience on turf like bye bye melvin number 10 at 20 to 1 king guillermo's numbers are also very favorable are more favorable than uh bye bye melvin he has a 105 top equibase speed figure he was third to sole volante on the turf at gulfstream in the pulpit stakes uh he has switched since switched over to the dirt has run reasonably well he is 15 to 1 coming out of Post position number 11, King Guillermo. And then rounding out the field is tons of gold. He's 30 to 1, but he's a maiden. He's 0 for 8, and a lot of people think that he probably shouldn't be in this race. And uh, with that being said, let's look at the horses that we believe are the contenders and the picks for the Tampa Bay Derby. There are a number of ways you can go. Uh, the way I'm looking at this, there's one scenario in which uh, the number 4, uh, which would be Chance It, the Mucho Macho Man, the 4, the 2, the 1, the 7. Uh, Chance It, Spa City. Texas Swing and Sole Volante rounding out that superfecta. superfecta 4217. The next superfecta that I think, in terms of uh, uh, sort of switching out these horses, the number seven Sole Volante, uh, basically consolidating his uh, Sam F. Davis form, the number nine, which would be unrighteous for Todd Pletcher, the number two, Spa City, and the number five, Market Analysis. Uh, 7925 uh, with Sole Volante on top. And then the scenario that I think will likely happen, although I'm not overconfident about this, is the number two Spa City over the number seven Sole Volante with the number five market analysis and the number nine unrighteous. So the Pletcher horses will do well, but in this scenario, they won't win. Uh, Kieran McLaughlin will get the victory. Uh, the two, the seven, the five, the nine. So those are my pick scenarios with that final uh, group of four and the Superfecta being my picks for the 2020 Tampa Bay Derby.
Now, let's move on to what many people think is either the co-feature or the outright marquee race of these three preps. That would be the San Vicente Stakes. It drew a field of seven, uh, 50, 20, 10, 5 uh, for this mile and a 16th prep. Bob Baffert has won this race six times, and he has two entries in this edition of the San Felipe. Let's look at the post positions. Fort McHenry uh, He's a half-brother to California Chrome. He's 25 to 1 coming out of post position number one. <clears throat> one of the favorites that you're looking at is Honor AP. He is a son, another son of Honor Code, which makes him a grandson to the great late, the late great AP Indy. He has not raced since October the 13th when he was so impressive in his maiden score, uh, won by five and a quarter lengths. John Sheriffs of Zenyatta fame, and of course he also trained uh, Giacomo, the 05 2005 Derby winner, along with Tiago, one of the great horses of the class of 2007, with hard spun street sense and curling, is the trainer. Uh, he's had a steady a diet of works, but is that going to be enough in the afternoon to tackle these horses? The pedigree suggests that he can do, that he can get the distance, that he's tailor made for the Derby. We shall see Honor AP out of number two. Number three is Wrecking Crew, and his Los Alamitos futurity was just that. It was a train wreck, but he did run better in his next start, and I think he could be interesting. Wrecking Crew, hole number three, 12 to one, and then Coming out of post position number four is arguably the favorite. He is the morning line choice at eight to five, and that is the sham stakes winner authentic for trainer Bob Baffert. He showed a lot of um, greenness in the stretch with his head cocked. Either he was admiring some of his fans uh, and or he got spooked by something. But again, the earplugs are in to correct that problem. Uh, and we'll see if uh, that's going to be sufficient or if he needs a half or a full blinker or if he doesn't need it at all. If he gets his act straight now, he's got the most speed. The, carry, the question is, does he have the brilliance to carry it beyond the sham stakes distance and beyond that and make it to the Kentucky Derby? He's coming out of hole number four, eight to five. He's going to flash that speed and it's going to be difficult in the eyes of many or some that, for anyone to catch him authentic for trainer Bob Baffert, son of mis uh, uh, son of into mischief. Number five is thousand words, the workmanlike son, undefeated son of pioneer of the Nile. A lot of people aren't overwhelmed uh, in terms of his running style or not being particularly flashy. He's a lot like his sire. The question is, will he show some of that brilliance or is he going to be a meat grinder, sort of workmanlike horse that it might or it may or may not be good enough to win one of these classic races or may even not be good enough to get him to the Derby. He's two to one coming out of hole number five. He's a stalking pouncer. He's definitely going to be tracking authentic around there. The question is going to be how close will he be or will he be comfortable sitting a little bit off of it? Obviously, he's going to be forwardly placed and then we'll see what kind of uh, afterburners or what kind of acceleration he has for the stretch drive. Uh, he will be beside coming out of number five to the number six uh, post position of Storm the Court. The Breeders' Cup juvenile winner and the, in many people's minds, lukewarm two-year-old champion. He was fourth in the San Vicente in a race that a lot of people think, even though he was outrun that day, is a means to an end to the longer races if, in fact, he appreciates this these route, uh, these route you know, runs of ground. So with him, you know, again, the question is going to be, is he going to end up being in the same landing spot? Is he going to land in the same spot that he did in the San Vicente, given the talent in this field? A lot of people think he can run better. Some people think that he's a bit of a fluke and that he's really up against it. He's still going to be six to one at the win. He's six to one in the morning line. We'll see what happens at the windows. Storm the court out of number six, rounding out the field out of hole number seven is Swagsational. Uh, he's been a bit of a local phenomenon against cowbreds and so forth. He's thirty to one for a reason because a lot of people think he's outclassed by the other runners in this San Felipe Stakes, which again leads me into the picks for this mile on the sixteenth. Uh, classic and prep to the to for the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, scenario one: the workman like a thousand words. The number five, the number two honor AP. They dominate this race, or they grind it out with authentic uh, finishing third and the number six uh, storm the court for, uh, fourth in this scenario. The five, the two, the four, the six would be one scenario you can use. Some of you folks are going to be simply very, very methodical and very, very simplified in saying a thousand words is a class horse. The back class is there. He's going to continue to improve uh, and he may even show a little more flash than he has previously. Five, two, four, six. That's one scenario. The next one is Honor AP, long layoff and being able to overcome the long layoff and all to win over the number four authentic and the number five uh, 
thousand words with Storm the Court. The two, the four, the five, the six with Storm the Court rounding out the superfecta once again. Two, four, five, six. And then the scenario that I think is going to happen once again, for the third time is the charm. I'm not overconfident with this, but I think Authentic is, is the real deal. I think he can carry his speed this far against this field. I don't know if anybody can keep up with them. So I've got the four, the five, the two, the three. That would be authentic thousand words, honor AP, and then the number three wrecking crew may be surprising everyone in terms of, you know, hitting the superfecta, rounding it out, finishing fourth, five, uh, excuse me, four, five, two, three. And then you possibly could once again stay with Storm the Court and make it a four, five, two, six uh, in terms of picking your superfecta for this San Felipe Stakes of 2020. Once again, those are my picks. I like Authentic in here, although it is a very, very classy field in this edition of the San Felipe. And we're going to take a look and recap all three of these preps right here at the CS Racing Report.